In this series, I explore Elon Musk's life to understand the events and decisions that made him such a visionary. By closely studying his biography, I will share in-depth insights into the real person behind the innovations and the headlines. And in today's episode, we will dive deeper to Elon's life and ever before, exploring his relationships and the rapid growth of PayPal all tying back to his extraordinary leadership. And make sure you stay tuned because today I will share two important leadership principles from these two very important chapter of his life. And first, let's listen to what Elon has to say about the first ever viral marketing strategy. PayPal is it's really a, a perfect case example of, of viral marketing, like Hotmail was, uh, where um, one, one, one customer would essentially act as uh, a salesperson for you for all the, for, for, for bringing in other customers. So they would uh, send money to a friend and essentially recruit that friend into the network. And so you had this exponential growth. The more customers you had, the faster it grew. It launched after year one, and by the end of year two, we had a million customers. The video is very interesting, right? Where Elon explained his viral marketing strategy, but everything could be traced back to a vision, which is why. And Elon said, if you fix all the reasons why a consumer would take money out of the system, then it will be the place where all the money is. And that would make it multi-trillion dollar company. In my opinion, it's probably the same vision that he has with X, Twitter because he's trying to turn that platform into something similar to WeChat. <laughs> During the time when he was running X, he wrote a very self-aware email to the team. I'm by nature obsessive compulsive. What matters to me is winning and not in a small way. God knows why. <laughs> so this is very interesting, right? At that time, he's 28 and 29. He just had this first successful exit after Zip2. And now he's on his second company. But the way he manages people never change and one of them is impossible deadline that he set for his team and for x.com his deadline for his team which is launch on thanksgiving before the launch a lot of nights that he was sleeping under the desk and he expect the other engineers to do the same and I will explain for a second here his vision of building X.com with two things, right? Both a banking service and a social network because people will usually transfer money between their friends and a lot of times even someone who they don't know or not super familiar with, right? For example, when you pay your landlord, your landlord might not necessarily be your friend, but when you go out, for a beer or tapas, maybe he or she will pay the bill and then you'll mention to them, okay, I'll pay you back later. And he saw that connection between money transfer with a social network long time ago. And this was in the early 2000s, which is pretty mind blowing, right? At the same time, they also got invested by Sequoia Capital, which is one of the most prestigious venture capital firm in the world. At the same time, he was facing competition as well. By the beginning of 2000, aimed the first signs that the air might be coming out of the internet bubble. Excel.com and PayPal were engaged in a race to sign up new customers. It was this crazy competition where we both had insane dollar bonuses to get customers to sign up and refer friends, says Peter Thiel. And as Musk later put it, it was a race to see who would run out of money first, which is a very common situation that... A company in order to grow it will burn a lot of cash something very important to keep in mind that the cash flow needs to be positive because if it goes negative and that means the company is in a lot of trouble so Elon Musk and Peter Thiel they're all smart people right it was clear to both of them that the network effect whichever company got bigger first would then grow even faster meant that only one would survive so it made sense to merge and there were quite a bit plus twists there from competition to start talking about merge to the company actually became one uh, there's a funny story here that uh, elon crushed his mclaren on the way to the sequoia's office with peter Thiel in it and according to peter Thiel himself that he wasn't even wearing a seatbelt at the time and he realized in that moment after Elon crashed his McLaren that this guy is a little bit crazy. 
Then it comes to story X plus PayPal. They need to restructure the company. Elon decided there should not be a separate separate engineering department. Instead, engineer would team up with product managers because he realized something very important. Separating the design of a product from its engineer was a recipe for dysfunction because designers may be designing something in their fantasy world, but it could be something super hard to engineer, whether when it comes to a rocket or a financial product, right? And this is super important. It is a philosophy that he will carry through Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, and probably his next companies. And here comes the leadership principles. Lead by example, right? Work extremely hard during insane deadlines. Yes, of course, you can set insane deadlines to your employees because they work for you and then they believe in your mission. That's why they join the company. But one of the best way to be a good leader is that you go first, which is you do it by not talking about it, but you show it through your actions, right? And here's a story of him being an expert. So one day, Part of his team is in a room. They're working on an issue. Musk poked in his head into the room, and even though his expertise was with Windows and not Oracle, immediately figured out context of the conversation, gave a precise and technical answer, and walked out of without waiting for the confirmation. The team went back to their Oracle manuals and looked up what Musk had described. One by one, we all said, "Shit, he's right." The team recalls. Elon will say crazy stuff, but every once in a while, he will surprise you by knowing way more than you do about your own specialty. I think a huge part of the way he motivates people are these displays of sharpness, which people just don't expect from him because they mistake him for a bullshitter or a goofball. Even you are an expert. Even you are a very smart person. You don't have to show that, demonstrate that. All the time, but every once in a little while, it's actually very productive to do so. It's actually chapter eleven. Relationship is super, super important, and I would prefer to wrap the video in this way. So Justine was his first wife. They met in the uni days, and the story about the ice cream date is actually super cute. He asked her for an ice cream date, and she agreed. But when he showed up, she wasn't there. So he asked her roommate what was her favorite ice cream. He bought that vanilla chocolate chip, and he was walking around campus with that ice cream. And finally, he found her. She was studying for a Spanish exam, and he handed to her, said, "I think this is your favorite flavor," and hang her the dripping cone. And she said, "He's not a man who takes no for an answer." She was impressed by his inspirations. Unlike other ambitious people, he never talked about making money. She says, "He assumed that he would be either wealthy or broke, but nothing in between." What interested him were the problems he wanted to solve, and this determination and this focus of being so concentrated on a higher purpose, not just for someone's personal gain. I really think that is something. So powerful, and it will come up over and over again through the biography. I mean, even the Bible says itself, right? Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all the things shall be added unto you. The Bible didn't say that seek for money or power first, but seek for the kingdom of heaven, which is something much bigger than yourself, and then all the things you want, you will have them. And Justin also said that even it seemed like crazy talk, you will believe him because he believed. In it, but unfortunately, their relationship is not what you think it is. Both of them were energized by drama, and they thrived by fighting. So there you have it. Elon Musk is truly a visionary, but I could only imagine how difficult it would be to be living and working with him. Of course, accomplishing a lot of things are great, but maybe we want to question and ask ourselves. Are those the sacrifices that we are willing to make? For example, maybe not everyone is willing to sacrifice their relationship, whether it's personal or romantic relationship, for a purpose. It really has to be someone quite unique, where they are just extremely driven, where they are just so curious about certain topics, so passionate. But I really don't think that not just 
any person will pull it off. The normal financial freedom, I truly believe that everyone could achieve that by learning as much as possible and working really hard towards it. But having four or five company and being the CEO at the same time, it is really think about it. Everyone will have 24 hours a day. If you are sleeping in your office quite often and setting insane deadline for yourself and for your team, it is fact that you will have little time for your family and your children. So keep that in mind, there is a price for everything and be careful what you wish for because you might get it. And also think about what you're willing to sacrifice in return. With that said, this is Jazzy. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.